Hello, this is David Harper of Bionic Turtle with a five-minute introduction to the balance sheet for a non-financial corporation. And the balance sheet characterizes the state or financial condition of the company at a point in time. So in this example, the left-hand side needs to balance with the right-hand side. The left-hand side is the company's resources or assets. These are assets that will be converted into cash or provide some future economic benefit. The sources of capital are the lenders and shareholders. So for example, if we imagine the bankers or lenders and they lend our company $900, let's say 300 of that is due within a year, so it's current liability, and then the balance of 600 is long-term debt, so it's a non-current liability, then our company has been lent $900. And we also need a shareholder or shareholders, and let's say they contribute $100 in cash, such that combined with some initial inventory to get the company started, means the company has $500 in current assets. And then the company uses the rest of the debt to purchase plant property and equipment or fixed assets or non-current assets worth $500. And now our simplified balance sheet matches because on the left we have current assets of 500 plus non-current assets of 500 equals total assets of 1000. So these are benefits to the company or will be converted into cash or future benefit for the company. And then the, on the right hand side we have the claims on those assets. And that means we have $900 by the debt holders who have a prior claim. And then the shareholders who have a residual claim of 100. So the balance of 1000 equals 1000 left and right. The basic equality of the balance sheet is assets on the left equals equity plus liabilities on the right. Although, because the shareholders are, hold the residual interest, it may be easier to think of it as equity is equal to assets minus liabilities. In other words, if we sold off all the assets immediately and then paid off all the liabilities, the debt and obligation, whatever we're left with, with goes to the equity or common shareholders. So for example, in this case where we have a balance and the shareholders have equity of 100, let's say that our plant property and equipment is impaired, it loses value down to 400. Then our assets are worth 900 and with total liabilities of 900, there is nothing left over for the shareholders. So they were wiped out with that depreciation or impairment. On the other hand, let's say if this is real estate, and it grows to 600, then 1100 in assets minus 900 in liabilities means that the shareholders have book equity worth 200. So I'll set that back to 500 and just will note that the sort order in both cases is pretty much by liquidity. Cash at the top, it's the most liquid, and then these items that are current that are assets that will generally be converted into cash within a year and then that's not so of the non-current assets. Similarly on liability side, current liabilities down to non-current liabilities. So the other thing we'll say about the balance sheet is that it's what's known as a mixed model, a combination of historical cost and fair value. Meaning, in our example, if the company purchased this plant property and equipment, or real estate for that matter, at $500, that's the historical cost. For several of these items, that's the value that will stay on the book. It's the historical cost. That may or may not equal, and as time goes by, is less likely to equal the fair value of these assets, such that we say these are this is a this balance sheet ref reflects the book value of assets and liabilities. And we don't necessarily think, we don't assume that this book value equals the fair value or the market value. It may be very different. Typically, an analyst needs to convert or translate the book value into a market value. Finally, what do we use the balance sheet for? 
many uses. Recall it's a snapshot of financial condition at a point in time with the caveat that it's book value and we need to make adjustments. It's common to perform ratio analysis. For example, we can take current assets, divide by current liabilities, and that gives us a current ratio, which is a measure of liquidity and tells us how well equipped the company is to fund those short-term obligations. Another thing we can do, for example, is divide shareholders equity into total assets and that gives us something like a tangible common equity ratio. 10% here gives us a measure of the company's equity buffer, its ability to absorb losses in the assets. And so that's just two examples of the kind of ratio analysis we can perform. So I hope this was a helpful introduction. This is David Harper, The Bionic Turtle. Thank you.